Hello, I'm Christopher Thompson, and if you're listening to this or watching this, then you must have listened to my Patrick Troughton impersonations. I just wanted to offer a bit more of an insight as to, you know, why Patrick Troughton? And the reason is because I absolutely adored him as the Doctor in Doctor Who. But I, not just that, I liked him in almost everything else that he did. And it was just, um, he's just one of those talents that unfortunately is, has gone. And it was his character skills, you know, for each different role was, you know, it's a craft which not many have or ever had. And and he managed, and he had it, and he, and um, not only is he is he so talented, but there's just there's a, a personal story to him as well, which I read in Michael Troughton's biography, which I highly recommend. It really offers a different insight into into Patrick Troughton, and it, it didn't put me off. In fact, he's he's an entirely separate person, and he kept it all very private, and you know it's it's worthy of a drama in itself, you know. And I've really wanted to make one. I always wanted to do a Patrick Troughton sort of performance in some way. But um, it had to be respectful. I didn't want to come in, you know, wearing a wig and just doing a silly impression. I wanted more than that. And I've been impressionist for years, so I have... Most impressions come to me like that. They sort of come in, I sort of absorb them, I sort of notice how people talk, you know, like... Peter Capaldi always talks with that sort of look like that, and uh, except that needs work. And, you know, it's, I'm never satisfied with anything, any, anything I do because it always can be improved. And I like to, I always consider everything a learning curve. And with Patrick Trout, I wanted to do. If I wanted to do a biopic, it had to be right. It can't be, you know, just you know what, put on a wig, pretend, and just go. Oh my giddy aunt, no. You need to add more to it. There's more to that voice than what meets the eye. You know, that one there is, uh, you've got the gravel at the back of the voice, which gets worse and worse as the time goes on. But that's because of age, you see. <clears throat> but in his uh, younger days, he did talk, you know, he was, uh, as, you see, there's a lot of to take in. And uh, I did a Michael, Michael Sheen line, because he's a, uh, brilliant he's not an impressionist he's he got into character he played he analyzed every little bit of movement every word every syllable everything and he's and he got the habit of you know of how he the other uh, his subject would have spoken and that's what i did with patrick trout and i sat there and watched so much not just of his doctor who but also all the other various roles he did and interviews and you can sort of well, I've always been able to notice a sort of trend upon the voice. Like in, um, I believe it's a Laurence Olivier uh, thing where he goes, James Tyrrell, your loyal subject. You know, the, you can tell there's a similarity between all of them, but they're different in every way. It's not like Sean Connery going, you know, into every film playing Sean Connery. Patrick Traum played various different people and it was really inspiring. It really is. And I wish I could do that. I really could. I really wish I could do it, but unfortunately, I've I, I've got a lot to learn. So I've so I wanted to really give a, a respectful, accurate portrayal. I mean, like I won't even if I was to make this biopic, I wouldn't do it for another 10, 10 20 years, purely because I'm too young. I'm twenty, I'm twenty three, and I'm not actually, uh, you know, I'm twenty years younger than Patrick was, and. You know, it would be inappropriate for me to play. And you just look at it and go, it's just a youngster doing the voice. And it's sort of blow it. And I know some people have been a bit shocked when they're like, he's 23 years old, and yet he seems to be able to do that rather, rather effectively. Hmm. Um, and that's because of just hard work. I've really put a lot of effort into it, and I'm, I'm never satisfied. I don't acknowledge that I'm good at anything until I hear it back. Because everyone's voice sounds different when it's played back. Everyone knows that. Same with impressions, really. I so I have, uh, which I haven't got to hand right now, a voice recorder, which I end up always playing back. And I'm like, oh, I could do that again. I could do it better. I could do it better. I could do it. And so with even when I I listen back to, I've listened back to the curator um, thing, uh, 
must have been at least a dozen times after I finished making it. Purely because I wanted to, I was like, sort of, I could work better there. I, you know, it's, you're nitpicking at your own work, but that's the way you should be. You should always think, how can I improve on this? And I want it to be right. So I spent a lot of effort doing that. And it's like, I know um, Fraser Hines um, plays Patrick Troughton's Doctor in the, in the Big Finish audios. And um, I'm not sure if he's heard my attempts yet or on Freedom of the Daleks. I can, I can say that some uh, Doctor Who um, established uh, people, I can't say who because uh, I'm, I, I don't really want to sort of, that it's been a sort of word of privacy, but I've had quite some praise from them and they're very impressed. So I'm absolutely really quite excited by that. But, um, I don't know if Fraser has heard it, and I'd like to know, purely because I don't want it to be considered as if I'm trying to get his job. It's more that I want to learn, you know, I would love the feedback from someone who knew him, like Michael Troughton, and, you know, or David, you know, just purely to know that's, you know, it's good or it's not that good. It need to work here and here and you know it's something to work on which is why I've had I've had uh, in total out of all the hundreds of kind messages to praise which I'm really grateful of so thank you very much I've had two negative comments and I've not taken them badly in a way I've not been upset by them in fact I've, I've, it made it feel real because now there's something I can work towards or see where I can work towards one of them was claiming that I didn't actually you know, it's um, it's passable because it's, you know, it's an impression. But I'm trying more than that. Um, so I wanted to demonstrate that I really do put a lot of emphasis and enthusiasm and really work detailedly hard to try and work on an impression because I don't, I can do the odd impression of of anything, you know, but I can't, I really didn't want to do that with this one. I wanted to do an accurate portrayal that would have been respectful to the actor, to the late actor himself, and his children, and his friends. And I really was so, um, I mean, when we did Freedom of the Daleks with Time Tunnel Media, I, the only reason we did it was because we did uh, one before that, Red Snow, and it was just because I, I just wondered, I don't want to do it, make this as a, you know, made it for entertainment purposes, just to see, I, I wasn't satisfied, but I wanted to see what people what people thought. And as um, we worked on it more and more, the more it got better and better. And we, I just like to, you know, I like performing, that's that's my style. I'm, I'm not a thespian, I am, just someone, I, I just, voices is what I tend to go with. And this is probably the most accurate, well, one. I wouldn't say accurate, it's not there yet. Um, give it 20 years and it will be. But I just wanted to really work hard and give a performance rather than a fun impression. Because sure, you can do Stewie Griffin from Family Guy as an impression. You don't seem to get right into character unless you really put some emphasis like that. Even my face is, uh, this store is, you know, going into what he would have, how his face should have been. But, um, I'm glad you really enjoyed it. And there are hopefully more to come. And, um, I'll go back into my normal voice. <laughs> but um, I'm so glad that you've all really kindly uh, messaged him but if you do have any more cr constructive criticism please do message him because I would love to know what I can do to work on and um, to anyone listening if, if I, I doubt Fraser is but if he was I'd and or Michael Trout I'd just love to know what I could do to work better and I utterly respect their impressions I love impressions from other people from various people have done Jake Dunsbridge and the fantastic Matt Smith you know and I really sort of I, I get excited and giddy when I see that 
So I'd love to know what I can do to work on it. So please do message. And thank you very much for all those who have messaged in saying, you know, the kind words that you have. So um, to all my new subscribers, hello. I will try to bring out more stuff. I originally only just put this up on a whim. But um, it's nice to know that it's been appreciated and the response has been totally overwhelming. So sorry for this long video of me explaining various things. That's a toilet flushing. How charming. But um, stay tuned for more. Thank you very much.